Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast and happy Friday. Congratulations, Congratulations, class of 2004. We did it. Congrats, grads. We graduated from this week. Congrats, grads. We are the graduates of this week. And might I say you graduates are looking absolutely gorgeous today. What week number of the year is it? How many weeks in are we? Let me we? guess. Let me guess. 16. Oh, I was going to say 10, 11. Oh. Let's see. This is important information. Oh, yeah, wait, no. How no, many it's, weeks it's have literally, we endured? One, it's literally two, 10, 11. Three, four, five, Am I? six, 12. Seven, eight. Completion of the 12th week. That's pretty major, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel confident saying this is the only podcast. Yes, where yes. You're going to know that this was the completion of the 12th week of the year. And we're just not doing things other people are doing, you yeah, know? We are constantly setting the bar higher and higher. And chasing after it, you know? And grinding. We're on our grind. Now, today is Friday. I have, as of this morning, officially completed my final furniture delivery. The couch made its way into my apartment. No problem this morning. And I'm done. T-Y, C&B. I love Crate and Barrel. I'm so happy for you. That was pretty quick on the... Rescheduling front? Yeah, usually, you know, furniture. They're like, we'll see you when we see ya. Yeah, they're like, And oh. there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, I'm dumb. You're, no, you're <laughs> dumb. I'm smart. I'm old. You're young. And there's nothing you can do no, about like, there's it. There's literally nothing you can do. What are you going to do? Pick it up yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. Do you have a truck? Because if you had a truck, you would know what it's like to make your own deliveries. But you don't. <laughs> That's literally them. They literally look at the calendar so and they're throw a dart. I think we'll just deliver in July. No, it's so true. What if we just said fall joggers? And we're all just sort of at the helm. At their whims. And my favorite yeah. part, my favorite thing that they do is when they're like, mm, sorry, supply chain. I haven't heard supply <laughs> chain in a while. Honestly, there was like a three year period where like you couldn't even get like a, an ice cream at McDonald's supply chain. What about, sorry, stuck at the fort. Oh, I haven't heard that. It's for stuck, a while. It's held up at customs. You know, customs does customs. a random search once a year and they chose us today. That actually did happen to me with my desk. That happened to me with my books. Oh, my book club met last night. I saw. Like, you know, book the book was bad when you don't even talk about the book. The book was so bad we couldn't even have like a critical conversation because that would require it to have been like some th what thought provoking or interesting. We couldn't even critique. We couldn't even do peaks and pits. I was like, the peak of my book was when it ended and the pit was when it started. Like, there was literally no structure. The book was a piece of shit. And then we all got into this sort of conspiracy theory about Reese Witherspoon. Because the girl who picked it was like, I'm so sorry. And we were like, honestly, we can't even blame you. It was a Reese's choice. When, when a book has that sort of stamp of approval on it, you're like, all right, it's not going to be the biggest piece of shit in the world. You would think... But you guys, like, this book was, like, and I know art is subjective. This book is not, it, it was a piece of shit book. Like, and, and when I posted it on my Instagram, everybody was like, I was so shocked, so shocked, so shocked. People were like, oh my God, no, it's on my list. Because it's like, it's one of those books. It's an it industry plan. I just took it off my plant. list after your review. It's an industry plan book. And so then I was trying to explain to everyone how, like, Reese is sort of monopolized the market on books and movies. And I'm sure she was able to get the rights to this book in terms of making it into a movie or a show. She's going to make it really popular. And then there'll be some sort of demand for it. But at its core, and if you're a reader, like, it's not a good book. It's giving Reese's Ponzi scheme. It's giving Hello, Ponzi. Hello, Ponzi. Well, this is just a great Jackie, time. Jackie, it's giving Ponzi sunshine. This is a great time to remind you that we don't have a Ponzi scheme going on over at the Redheads. Like, maybe if That's we That's not did, what I heard. Maybe if That's we did, I heard. we could make a buck. I heard, I heard that the Redheads is running a Ponzi scheme and that host is on Ozempic. On opposite day. Did you hear that on April Fool's? On opposite day. What are you, four? <laughs> Did you hear that on April Fool's? 
No, I heard it on March 20th. Let me tell you how ready I am for April Fool's. Like, every time I see something slightly nefarious, I'm like, is it April Fool's? Like, I'm on guard. Oh, wow. She's got her guard up. We're like two weeks out and I've been on guard. I'll see like some crazy headlines. I'm like, April Fool's? No. But also, all that to say, everyone's being crazy. Okay, by the way, that's this is your warning. Jackie O has reminded us all. Be on alert because even the people like to get creative like the days leading up starting their prank. People are getting like a little nutty about it. Don't be fooled by the rock set they got, you know, like it's April Fool's. Yeah. Don't be fooled. So just stay on alert for that. I can't talk about book clubs without saying that the renaissance of the redheads is well underway. It's in full effect. 2024, the year of the redheads. You don't want to miss this. That's what I'm going to say. If you want to be reading pretty quality books, check out the redheads and all that to say, Reese's Book Club needs to hire Dana, is what they need to do. Pitch. Because By she's the way, you a- pitch. I need to fix my camera, so I'm here. I think I've said pitch. this before, but Dana reads so much. She's a really good book critic, and she should have like a freelance job at Reese's Book Clubs where she reads the manuscripts and chooses good books and gives her recommendation. That would be like the perfect job for her. Of course, it would be an inherent contradiction with the redheads, but we could maybe figure something out. It would be an inherent contradiction with the redheads, but rising tides rise all shides. And Dana sort of being employed by the world's leading book club while also cultivating a passion of hers, her book club, I think rising tides would rise all shides. And that skill set doesn't really apply to the redheads because we all choose a book that none of us have read. So it's not like Mm -hmm. these are book recommendations. Like we're all going on a journey together, a June's journey. Oh, speaking of June's journey is a sponsor today. Thank you so much. We're all going on a June's journey. And I also can't talk about socialization without What socialization? Just like social things. You were talking about your book club. Oh, socializing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what? I had a brain moment. I'm like, what does the word socialization mean? Just like the zation of social. Got it. Without saying that yesterday, I was the most social person on the planet. I really kind of want to take my headphones off for this. Like you hanging out with another influencer. Like, okay, I'll just, I'll go. I'll see myself out. Not only did I go to lunch with another influencer, I also went to dinner last night. I didn't even host Did you go with another influencer? No, I went with some new friends. Okay. But I went out for lunch and out for dinner. It was a lot of social battery for your girl. No, it's actually crazy how like you have so many friends now. Like you didn't even call me yesterday. Like you're kind of done with me. No, I know. And I'm like so busy. Like, I didn't even post on my Instagram that I went out to dinner. Like I was just. Did you say, no, I know that you're too busy for me? You should have said, no, dirty, I'm not. Well, I'll never, of course, be too busy for my today. But yesterday was just a particular busy day wherein I also overestimated how much better I was feeling because I oh. really wasn't feeling that great. And it was really kind of a struggle to be so social and so unwell. But that's the thing. I that's persevered. the thing about getting sick. That's the thing about getting sick is that knowing when you're recovered is kind of a skill set that I don't have. Like I always think I'm better. Next thing you know, I'm in the hospital because I thought I was better and I started to like do too much. I didn't think I was 100 percent better, but I didn't want to cancel my day and I wanted to honor my commitments because, as I said, I had lunch with a fellow influencer yesterday who's also a toaster, the best kind of influencer. Factual. Um, and we just had a great girly swirly afternoon. I went to lunch with Mary Orton. She's a okay, fabulous Okay, this is influencer. really disgusting. She's this is really disgusting. Girl. I'm sitting right here. I'm sitting right here. Fabulous. Oh, influencer. I feel like vomiting. I'm sorry, Tony. You would have loved it. The only thing that was missing was you, my influencer well, partner in crime. Well, thank you. My thank PIC. You. IP, your eye pick. Yeah, it's so influencer great. Partner in crime. It's so great to have an influencer partner in crime. Some influencers have that, and some yes. don't. And I feel for no, those that don't. I feel that way um, as well. Actually, a lot of the times, obviously with you, like, but with the New York stuff, I also feel that way about Margot. Like, if I'm ever going to something where I have like a little bit of like, an, is this going to be awkward? Margot's like nine times out of ten going to be there. It's like actually not fair. Yeah. I guess sometimes people bring like their assistant or their photographer, or they have a plus one. People will extend that plus one arm I never did that and then sometimes the like true, if I went to an event that you or Margot weren't at and I was solo dolo no but the true like good events don't let you bring plus ones but sometimes like influencers need to bring their their photographers like to take their picture because if they're being paid to post from there like you need someone to shoot the content for me I don't know why I never like thought that far ahead because I was always having to ask someone to like take a picture of me like I could die I could seriously Pain. die but clenching pain. Painful. This is not the industry for me. 
It's not. That's why she left town. She left the industry. She said, fuck you, bitches. I'm out. No, like sometimes are you ever in a moment where you're like so uncomfortable and you just kind of like see yourself from up above and it's like, it feels like that um, MTV, like, I'm pro- you're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. You know, people use that phrase all the time that you like float out of your body and you're sort of watching yourself. That has literally never happened to me. Oh my God. So many times I'm like looking down at myself. I'm like, how did you get into this position? But like, how are you getting that aerial view of yourself? I'm being dead serious. Like, are you have a drone? It's I seriously of, don't understand. It's more of an imagination. Okay. It's an imaginatory moment. It's an imaginatory moment. Yeah. That's Think never it. happened to me. Next time you find yourself in like a weird space or like just like feeling weird, just zoom out on yourself it's really funny that's so funny that you bring that up because I don't even think I realized like I made a conscious decision many years ago like I was not going to make myself vulnerable to being in situations like that like I don't know how or why but like I said I'm like I'm not making myself feel uncomfortable or weird I have not found myself in like a genuinely uncomfortable moment in a really long time I won't let myself get there like I'll just leave that's good for self-preservation but those moments are also good for growth. growth so true but at oh man, what I'm hearing point, I'm hearing Phantom Romeo quivers. I heard something like, too, honestly. You did, right? And it's not the Stry guy. He is here in studio today in his chair. It, I heard his like mommy. a Did you hear this? I I heard something. I'm not gonna lie. So in terms of the show today, we have five stories. Would you be able to describe those five stories in three words for me? My absolute most annoying favorite thing to ask you. Okay, not in three words. We can play that game another time because I do have a way to describe these stories that I feel okay. like we'll let everyone know. Maybe I could ask for permission to go outside the bounds of the framework of the show. Can I give you five words? Here's the thing about the stories today. Uh, what? Oh, you're scaring me. It's five words. Oh, great. Five stories, five words. So far, there's only four. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, by the way, because we have Queenie and Meanie of the Week. We can make that a fifth story. Yeah. The thing is, we're so, we hold ourselves such, like, to, like, such strict, no one cares if we did seven stories or if we did four. Like, it's Friday. I think it's fine. And Unless there's some breaking news. Every once in a while, like, we accidentally do four. I've never done it intentionally and, like, tried to gaslight people. Like, here's the best five. And then knowing it's only four. Mm-hmm. And I could so easily do it to you, too, because you're always like, what number is this? Like, I just kind of exist in this weird time space continuum when it comes to the stories. And you just trust me that there's five and I'm being honest and I could have been dishonest today, but I just feel like transparency is why like people love this show. We're authentic to a fault. To a fault. Remember that one time we tried to clickbait? I will do a quick another look-see at the stories while you're doing the ads, but if there's only four, I'm not going to torture you with a fifth story from CNBC business that nobody wants to hear. Uh cnn.com slash money well that sounds good that sounds interesting actually no, no. i did see a money story today that for a second i thought was interesting but i didn't want to talk about it but i'm bringing you want it to talk now. about it right now only Sorry. because we're talking about cnn.com slash money come on guess what company went public on the stock exchange yesterday <gasps> i love stories like this let me think let me think let me think i don't know reddit Yucky. Now, wow, I just wasn't expecting And they went the under the ticker Y-U-C-K. No, I think <laughs> they went under. <laughs> I thought that I had seen that their ticker was L-O-S-E-R-S. Oh, yeah, that's what their alternate trading is under. Okay, so funny. We had actually went on this rant a couple of weeks ago that like if you find yourself on reddit like you are a mentally ill person and to seek treatment immediately like mm-hmm. pause the podcast and a lot of people we got feedback being like listen like your pov of reddit is obviously like those awful pages where they like write stuff about influencers but like most of the platform is extremely useful like if you're into you know handiwork and you know i have actually recently ended up it's it's basically uh replace yahoo answers you know when you need a question to an answer like it's usually on reddit actually i was having a tech issue with my podcast machine literally on Monday and I found the answer on Reddit. So I hear what people are saying, but yeah. Yeah, no, I I feel like I'm always asking Google a question and then it'll take me to like someone on Reddit who asked that question about like some nonsense. Okay, thanks. No, and I've actually been thinking a lot about Reddit recently. Um, And like I, and you too, but obviously I was making it about me, like I am, 
so incredibly famous. Like, it's actually crazy. I think I need, like, full-time security. Like, I need, it's, should I move to L.A.? Yeah. Well, then, would you be as famous in L.A. or more famous? How would that work? Oh, you know, I do I feel like a lot of, like, influencers or people who are doing their thing and then move to L.A., they get kind of lost out there. I actually completely agree. physically and metaphysically. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like everyone in L.A. has read it. Yeah. But are you more of a big fish, small pond? Oh, small yeah. pond, yes. big fish. Don't even finish the question. Big fish, small pond. You like, but not that New York City is a small pond at all. When it comes to like podcasting, content creation, not comedy, but yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Well, d- yeah, I guess it depends. And we learned that lesson so many times the hard way trying to get guest co hosts. But it's definitely doing better now than it was in terms of yes. influencers in the city. Yes, there's a small renaissance occurring. That's a show I want to watch. Influencers in the city. They have tried so many Why times. Why can't and they it, just oh, make a decent show? All those, like the influencers want to be on TV. The TV wants people who have followings. Like, why is this so hard? It's actually hard. And I think it's something that the Housewives franchise faced is that the influencers who want to be on TV are really not people that we're interested in watching. The true, like, I want to see Ariel Charna. She would never. Okay, she would never. And I feel like we do need to, like, level set our expectations. We're not going to get Ariel Charna. But there are plenty of influencers. I would never. Influencers are plenty. But, like, who? I don't know, like Margot's girl of gang, girl gang. Show about them. Put them yeah. on the show. I love, love, love all of them. Though Margot wouldn't think, be on it. She wouldn't want and, to. And I don't think that would be successful. I don't. And that's not a knock to those girls. I swear to God. I just don't think it would. Because I need, we, we think, you're thinking very insularly. Like, I'm thinking about, you know, people with global brands, Ariel Charnas. But I also think it wouldn't be successful because, like, they have something to protect. They're not going to get their Everyone hands dirty. That's the thing. No, like, you could, if someone is going on reality TV to become a household name, like, they're going to do the most. They're going to. They have nothing to lose. They're going to try. Yeah, they, all they have is to gain. So I think that's the inherent conflict. Yes, and that's why, like, the true New York socialites, those women who, ladies who lunch, you will never catch a real one of them on The Housewives, ever. Yeah. Okay, well. Except Cindy Barshop. Our TV hopes are dashed. Except Cindy Barshop, Claudia's all-time favorite housewife. Only real (laughs) toasters will know. I don't even understand that joke. Me neither anymore. I just, like, I feel like. Jackie used to say that, like, I loved Cindy Barshop. I never even spoke there about was her. Jackie was like, Claudia's obsessed. There was a time, not anymore, because I forgot about this joke, but there was a time whenever we would like talk about housewives or past housewives, like you always, she was your go to. She was your Keenan Super Driver. You guys, it might, it might have been twice. Like, I seriously never said it. She was I your Keenan never... Super Driver, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, because it's the only, like, you don't have anything else. I never even brought up Cindy Barshop. Bitch. Once AI is able to search all of our episodes for like things that we've spoken about, and I can just put it's in. It's over for you, hookers. I can just put in when Claudia spoke about Cindy Barshop. It's over for you, comma, it's hooker. For, it's over for me, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have to stop AI. For that reason alone. How did we get here? It's Friday. Congrats, grads. Let's go from the top. June's journey. Oh, if we could really get, that would be such a fun game. I actually know how we got here. Shall I say? No. Five stories. There's only four. CNN money, Reddit. Yeah. Influencers. You're so famous. Influencers in the city. The TV, TV show. Cindy Bar Shop. It's not that crazy. It's kind of just further proving your thesis that like all roads lead to Cindy Bar Shop. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Exactly. And I actually feel like we have a lot of listeners who don't know who Cindy Bar- Barshop Cindy is. Cindy Barshop was a one-season wonder on The Real Houses of New York. I wouldn't even say she was a one-season wonder. She was so forgettable. That's actually... Except for that she owned a business that did like facials and bedazzling and like on people's vaginal vaginas. vaginal rejuvenation. It was called Vajazzling. She had like a vagina bedazzle studio. <laughs> Not that Claudia goes home and studies Cindy Barshop history. Not that I... Not that I currently have a vajazzled vagina. Not that she has an appointment later at bar shops. Bar shops. No, no, like. <laughs> I'm telling you. There's something here. Maybe it was her bangs. Like, 
There definitely was something extreme. Also, her name. Something like, that drew you, Claudia Ashray, to her Cindy Bar shop. There is like a. An I'm telling you, string. I, the invisible string is. I actually happen to think she has such a fabulous name. When you see it written out, and you also verbally like Cindy Bar shop, it's kind of like a a brilliant name. So I wasn't wrong all these years. No, you were. You were. You. I feel like. You actually made me upset. Like, now, yes, I am. <laughs> a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, you made it so. <laughs> Thanks. Powerful woman I am. Now, I feel, because we do have the stories. There might be four, there might be five. But we also have Queenie and Weenie of the Week. My favorite segment, which is our weekly segment, where we sort of bestow an honor upon two people as the queenie and the weenie of the week. Were you being weenie-like this week? Well, you just might be named weenie of the week. Two people, places, or things. Yes, yes. It's Mine is a bit more conceptual this week. I love that. One thing about weenie of the week, it's like, it's truly what you make it. And I do want to start petitioning, seriously, to have queenie removed. I had three options for weenie and I can barely think of one queenie. I just want to say it's really not fun. Now I know we're trying to negate like not to be like negative queens. That's like not why. It just felt like balanced. And sometimes I only have a I don't like it. Weenie. I like I actually don't like queenie of the week. But sign up in the comments. Should it just be weenie of the week? Also weenie of the week rolls off the tongue so much more like fabulous. No I think it's good for pos- It's good Claudia. We have to keep the balance. Okay, let's just breeze through Queenie later. Of course, like, we always cares? do. Yeah, we yeah, always yeah. Do. Um, Without further ado, here are the fast five, maybe four stories that you need to know. And the fast five, perhaps four stories that you might need to know, are brought to you by Fashion Pass. You guys know we have been Fashion Pass girlies for years. In case you don't remember, it's the clothing rental service that actually has cute clothes. So I know you're going to say, Turdy, why is this rental service di- different than other rental services? Well, First, for starters, the shit is cute. It's stuff that you can find like on Revolve. It's good brands. It's hot right now. It's not old tunics and grandma moo sorry. And their plans are very well priced. So Fashion Pass was started uh, by a toaster. And they have the best brands for Love and Lemons, Love Shack Fancy, Good American, Show Me Your Moo Free People, so many more. And they're brands that you have heard of and brands that you love. And the plan that we're on is the trendsetter plan where you get four clothing items per order and you can switch them out as often as you want. As often as you want. You don't need to wait for like the term to end. Um, If you love something or you don't love it or let's say it doesn't fit, you're not stuck with it just because that's like your order for the month. They have you covered for vacation, weddings, bachelorettes, anything bridal. Jackie was wearing a sweater from Favorite Daughter, which is a very cool brand, by the way. Like the fact that they have it on Fashion Pass is cool. It's like a hot new brand. It's started by Aaron and Sarah Foster. And it's like kind of hard to get their stuff. Not on Fashion Pass. Precisely. The ship shipping is super fast. They take care of dry cleaning, so you just send them back in the pre-labeled bag when you're done, and you'll get to choose new items. We have a discount code for you, and it's the best discount they currently offer. You're not going to get this anywhere else. If you go to fashionpass.com, use code Toast at checkout, you will get thirty dollars off your first month. So you can try it for just eighty nine dollars. That's code Toast at fashionpass.com. Today's episode is brought to you by June's Journey, as Jackie so adequately sort of teased at the beginning of the show. It was a bit of a so, teaser. June's Journey is a great phone game. I love games on my phone. I'm always playing games. And June's Journey is a fabulous one because everybody loves a good mystery, especially one with as many twists and turns as June's Journey. Step into the role of June Parker and search for hidden clues to uncover the mystery of her sister's murder. Engage your observation skills to quickly uncover key pieces of information that lead to chapters of mystery, danger, and romance. Where will each new chapter take you? So it's really fun to play. You can find hidden clues and uncover a murder mystery. You can solve mind-teasing mysteries of the Roaring Twenties. The vibe is very Gatsby, very old school, very, you know, uh, Roaring Twenties, flapper girl. So it's really cute and fun to play. You can engage your sense of observation to find hidden clues. Search for hidden objects from the parlors of New York to the sidewalks of Paris. Each chapter will uncover a collection of dazzling hidden object spectacles for you to solve. Super fun. Um, You can customize your own luxurious estate island. Let your imagination run wild when decorating your island estate. And basically build your very own island estate with expansive gardens and beautiful buildings. You can download the app uh, and crack the case. Download June's Journey for free today on iOS and on Android. June needs your help, detective, so download June's Journey for free today on iOS and Android. Discover your inner detective when you download June's Journey for free today on iOS and Android. Our first story. Josh Peck speaks out about Quiet On Set documentary after being slammed for not publicly supporting Drake Bell. 
So Josh Beck has posted and spoken up. Josh Beck? Yeah, just roll with it. Yeah. I'm trying to harm good guys SEO. (laughs) Good, good, good. Um, But he posted a statement to his Instagram saying, quote, I finished the Quiet On Set documentary and took a few days to process it. I reached out to Drake privately, but want to give my support for the survivors who were brave enough to share their stories of emotional and physical abuse on Nickelodeon sets with the world. Children should be protected. Reliving this publicly is incredibly difficult, but I hope it can bring healing for the victims and their families as well as necessary change to our industry. Yeah. uh, How this documentary ended up being about Josh Peck is so bizarre to me. Um, I know Josh Peck personally. Did I think he was, you know, championing the abuse? No. He's a very good guy. And no pun intended. Pun intended. Him being villainized is one of the more bizarre things to come out of this whole saga. And I don't know how we got so lost in our rage, but I need everybody to resharpen their pitchforks and leave Josh alone. And let's tackle the industry. Let's tackle the infrastructure that made abuse like this possible. Let's tackle the industry that is probably still, well, we'll hear another documentary in 10 years about what's going on on some other kids' channel. Right now, as we speak. So, like, seriously... People need to get a grip. And this, like we've lost the plot. We have. People do need to redirect. Um, yeah, is it killing you that Good Guys is kind of just like the center of the drama this week? No, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. But like I was talking to Ben. I'm like, I just started looking at him. And I'm like, how the fuck did you become like like the, the name on everybody's lips quiet on set? And like you're like right at the center of it. Literally how? Yeah, literally how? But that's so Ben. He doesn't even try and he finds himself in these like precarious. Ben literally like. Just at the center of drama. He's like Forrest Gump. No, Ben was literally on the cover by accident of the New York Post. Because like, of course, somebody took him to a basketball game and he sat courtside. And it was like, apparently he stood up at the perfect moment. And it's like him and I forget who. Like, like that's Ben. Like he doesn't even try. If it was me, I would know that like this was a moment. And I would literally be you like, you want it yeah, I want it too much. No, he's literally Forrest Gump. He just finds himself in the middle of these major moments. And how? I don't know. All that to say, I thought this was actually a very well-written statement. I thought it was a great statement. It's it's so obvious, you know, to people who are, have their well, heads screwed on straight. Like, yeah, this is tragic. Let's protect the children. Children should be protected first and foremost. Like, let's advocate for change in the industry. It's crazy that it even needs to be said, but I can't even imagine like what Josh is instagram was looking like right well so what had happened was that the day that everything sort of blew up josh had posted a tiktok right like early earlier in the day which was just like his regular content using different tiktok sounds and like being funny and it was basically just a a sound if i haven't spoken to you since in the last whatever don't come looking at me like it was whatever just like his regular content but it happened to have like gone viral at the time that like the Dan Schneider interview came out and it was just poor timing and a lot of people thought it was like a message to Drake and it wasn't like I bet you Josh filmed that TikTok a month ago he's like a he's like an actual content creator he has 10 million followers he's not like you know slobs like us like I'm sure he has like a I mean he might he probably does run his own social medias but he's not um Somebody would just like post something and then uh, record something and then post it. I'm sure like this was scheduled. Like he's a real content creator. Yeah, but also it's like whatever he had posted on that day, people would have taken yeah. to mean that he was talking to Drake and whatever TikTok sound it was. Like you're even you're one of my elite employees. Like that right. wouldn't have gone well either. It's true. People would have read into whatever it was. Right. So he cleared so, up what didn't need clearing up, but hopefully people can like fuck off now yeah no i so i i refuse to to get into the mindset like i can't understand how this became about josh like and i feel like we always say after we watch a documentary and like this one we're like how did this happen and it's like look we've now all learned everything and we're still not mad at the right people right exactly and sorry i don't say we because i have i'm normal but yeah and like the toasters are normal too so mm-hmm. we're all just kind of like an echo chamber of normalcy it's a little frustrating it's it's a little boring actually <laughs> No, for real. Like, it's a little boring, like, always having the right takes and being told we're crazy. Like, I'm so over this culture. We are normal, like, traditional good people. And every time we see something, they're like, you guys are so wrong. Like, what? What about this? Maybe you're wrong. Yeah. I'm, like, kind of sick of it. I know, Claude, but the man in the arena, what do they say about him? What do they say? I actually know. No, it's like... It's, it's just, not easy. It's not easy being the man in the arena. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not but the it's same. Easy to, it's easy to be a slob in the stands booing. It's easy to be a slob in the stands booing. But no, the man in the arena, like, yeah, that's so me. Who said that? Theodore Roosevelt. Theo. That's such a good. Okay, wait. What's rip, the? Ripped. Ripped to both of Theo's. Rip to both. Oh, here is the famous quote. It's a long one, but I want everyone. I'm going to hang on every word. It is not the critic who counts. Slay. Slay. I think what he was saying, it's not the slub in the stands who counts. (laughs) Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. Oh, this is such a slay. It is. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement? And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat? Jackie. It's literally It's us. giving. Read it. <laughs> No, seriously, like, I, I've recently had, like, a renaissance about Reddit. Jackie, there are 15,000 people who follow that page. Like, they, that's 15,000 people, like, who hang on to every word we say. And we are in the arena, dust on our face, the man, blood in our mouths. The man in the arena, yeah. Oh, my God, no. We're so man in us. the arena, greater than, slobs in the stands. Well, that's kind of, like, the thesis of today's episode. Yeah, it is. I'm glad for this detour. Me too. I love that quote. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Switching gears. However, pertinent to something that we discussed at the top of the show, One Season Wonder, Anna Marie Wiley has been fired from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after one season. Anna Marie Wiley has been fired from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after less than one season. She said on Instagram, I just got word today that I will not be returning to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. To say that I'm disappointed is an understatement. She emphasized that she never auditioned to be on the show and claimed she was asked to star on it out of the blue and six weeks after the cast had already started filming. I was thrown into filming two weeks later, mid-season. I was very excited about the opportunity. And I thought following exactly what I was instructed to do throughout filming last season was the way the game was played. Listening to what I was instructed to do was my rookie mistake. What I'm disappointed about is that the fans never got to see me or even a glimpse of my unique life story. Like, I'm really... um like one of my least favorite things is like explaining yourself as a loser. You know, like it didn't work. <laughs> There's nothing sadder to me. It's like it's giving sore loser. And it's possible. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way for, you know, at a job that they were fired from anything. Like I don't like I'm really not interested in your explanation or your excuses. Like you didn't cut it. Yeah. It's just giving sore loser. It is. It's it's giving bummed like I think she has a lot of regrets about how she behaved this season. I'm glad to know now, like, she was doing what she thought she was supposed to do as, like, a housewife, what producers were telling her. And that's that wouldn't have been her choices because they were weird choices. Um, but I, after the reunion, I was ready to, like, start anew with her. Everyone kind of has a crappy first season. You're thrown into the fire. I do think it's a little unfair to bring her in the middle of one season she did move the storyline a little bit. She didn't do nothing. And then to fire her, I do feel like she, everyone deserves a sophomore season. I agree. And um, if you don't give someone a second chance, like you never know what they're truly capable of. And I, I sometimes feel conflicted because there are some people who are so absolutely fucking insufferable, Peggy Sulhanian, who absolutely have to go after one season. But I would have felt that way after Eileen Davidson's first season. And she turned out to be such a butterfly. And there's actually rumors that she has been contacted by producers to rejoin the cast. Oh, I do like that as an aside. I also think if you come on and you know what you're supposed to do and you know the game, like that kind of rings inauthentic too. Like if you've watched too much of the show. So I think her coming on and kind of shitting the bed is like, is very genuine. And I would have not been opposed to seeing more of her next season. She also talks about like what she had wanted to show in her life. She said, what I am is a woman, a proud black woman who is truly blessed with a wonderful, strong black man as my husband who lifts me and our four wonderful children up with so much love and positivity on the daily. It was an important mission of mine for the next season to show a solid black family unit 
and that true black love exists even in Beverly Hills. Also, my struggle with losing my mother to lung cancer within weeks of taping and my struggle with adoption trauma and what was going to be and still will be a new life journey for me to find my biological parents, all of which was taped, which was never shown. The last part I'm okay. good on. Yeah, no, it sounds like she, what she was willing to share was something I might find interesting with somebody I've seen for 10 seasons. Like, to come on so strong with such a personal storyline that doesn't involve drama or the other women, while admirable and a beautiful story, personally, it's going to be a no for me on finding your bylaw. It's giving, you know, it's giving Melissa Gorga having a sister. sister. <laughs> and that she was like a and she had been on She had been on TV for 10 years at that point, and we still didn't care. Yeah, or Ashley Darby went and found someone at one point. Um, maybe it was her dad or something. Yeah, yeah. Don't care. No, it's one of my least favorite tropes. I completely lines. agree. Um, so yeah, this is a this is sad for her. I feel I feel bad for her that like just kind of shot the bed. I feel bad that she was fired and she clearly like really wanted to make it work, and that's and had she had more to give, and I feel like maybe she, they could have. They didn't. I feel like they didn't need to make this decision right now. They could have like had her on the next season, like yes. see how the season panned out. Like, what do they have planned for next season? Who is going to join? The it's cast? true. She really could have like gotten the first couple of episodes a trial, and if it didn't work out, she'd just be friend of. I felt like the reunion was pretty redemptive for her. Like, I I wasn't mad anymore about whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever sauce, sauce. So, yeah. I also feel like she came on as a friend of Kyle. I don't know how close they actually are. But Kyle should have given her like a little bit of more of a a, a leg up book. Yeah, but also like Kyle was dealing. It's like she was brought on as Kyle's friend, and Kyle, who should have been her sort of uh, captain, was going through her own shit and like literally had absolutely no time to help anyone. Yeah, it's true. It's unfortunate so, timing. It is. We shall see. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Lucas Gage apologizes to Shania Twain for wasting her time after she performed at his wedding to Chris Appleton. So Lucas Gage was on Watch What Happens Live talking about his ill-fated marriage to Chris Appleton and he answered questions about the marriage while answering a question about why he... Answering? And, while answering, yeah, he did answer. <laughs> yeah. It's a very formal answer. Yeah. Uh, a question about why he and Chris decided to wear fur coats on their big day. He took the time to express some regrets. He said, quote, I want to apologize to Shania Twain for wasting her, her time. He admitted that wearing the fur coats was a horrible idea. He said, quote, I mean, we're still holding on. You're still the one after three weeks. That was unhinged. That was like the biggest waste of time. I love you, Shania. I'm really sorry about that. He also apologized to Kim Kardashian, who legally wed them. He said, look, Kim's great. She was really sweet to fly us all out and take care of us and pay for everything. Sorry to Kim and Shania. I'm so sorry. No, you know what? Like, thanks. Like, I actually appreciate the apology. I think we all watched that go going down knowing this marriage was going nowhere it was like the most random quick i stand by the fact that i did not know this marriage was going nowhere i oh. thought this was a really cute couple oh. that seemed well matched no it was literally like a month they were together like two months and then they got married in vegas and they were divorced after three months or six months yeah yeah like i think i sorry all of us except for jackie who's on ozempic yeah. we all knew that um but you, you really can't be telling people that because then they're gonna be like oh why isn't it working uh, how i'm being villainized you said you were mad nobody was speculating that you were on ozempic no no no. i speculating but you're giving comfort like you, you're my sister so people believe what you have to say about me okay so you want me to be like more speculatory in my language yes more speculatory please okay so Everybody except for Jackie O, who's speculatorily on Ozempic. <laughs> um, Perfect. We knew it was going nowhere. And to see all these resources sort of being wasted, like Kim just doesn't marry anyone. She doesn't fly anyone. She doesn't contact Shania Twain for anyone. Having Shania Twain sing You're Still the One, probably one of the top 10 biggest wedding songs of the last like decade. Unfair. And you know what? I appreciate the apology. I feel like my time was wasted too. Knew if you're saying everyone knew this is going nowhere, wouldn't you think that Kim knew too? Like, she's his best friend. Yeah, but whether or not she knew, like, he's still going through with it, so she's going to make her friend happy. Okay. It's just kind of like a funny pop culture thing. Like, no one was harmed in the making of this wedding. You know what's a funny pop culture thing? Hmm. Jackie, tell me what Lucas Gage has acted in. White Lotus. Oh, okay. Fine, 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 fine. But, like, I don't know him he's from that. He's the only Lucas Gage I know. I know there's another one, but he's from White Lotus too. Okay. 
I've seen every episode of White Lotus. I could not tell you who Lucas Cage was. He worked, he was in the, I didn't watch the second season, but in the first season, he worked at the hotel. As? Um, I don't know what his, like a, a valet sort. He, did he have sex with the guy with the um, hotelier? Did he? Uh, and like yes. maybe something to do with weed? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because do you know why he's famous? White Lotus to me. No, that's the thing. They always say White Lotus actor. No. He was in that video that went viral of the um, Zoom audition where the producer director that he's being that he's auditioning for thinks he's on mute and he says to his like partner god these apartments are so fucking sad yeah 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 that was lucas cage and that's so when they say white lotus lucas cage they should really say zoom audition lucas cage okay that's how i know him wow yeah is that crazy and he was like that's yeah i know that's why you got to book me on this role yeah and he handled it really well remember when we said that like we reported on that story yes 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 yep well that's lucas wow. cage the more Thank you, you know. For the fun fact. You're welcome. I feel like every time you talk about Lucas Cage, you tell me that, and it's as if I, it's a new every time. <laughs> feels like the just first stick? time. It feels like the first time every time. <clears throat> I feel that. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Which is our fourth and final story, but it's a, fourth a really and final. good one. Okay. It has the power of two stories. The power of love. Jack Black says that he's ready for a School Rock sequel, but Mike White needs to write in and he's really busy right now with the White Lotus. It comes Fuck, back to the White so Lotus. That's so true. Jack Black recently told Joe while making the press rounds for Kung Fu Panda 4 that he's more ready that he is more than ready to make a sequel to School of Rock, the 2003 comedy classic that was directed by Richard Linklater and written by Mike White. Jack Black has stayed close with his younger co-stars over the years, but a movie sequel has never gotten off the ground. School of Rock was adapted into a hit Broadway musical, but perhaps it's time to get the band back together on the big screen. He said, I wish there'd be a School of Rock 2, Electric Boogaloo. Of course he said it that way. Here's the thing. A lot of people might not realize Ned Schneebly from that movie was actually the writer of that movie, and he uh, didn't have a lot of like crazy success until recently when he wrote White Lotus, and obviously now he's like super rich and famous. Now... I probably am one of the biggest fans of School of Rock. Actually, my husband is. But, like, I love, I quote it on a daily basis. You're a big fan by marriage. Yes, by, yeah, by blood. Um, however, I actually think this is a movie that needs to, like, exist on its own in perpetuity. I don't think a sequel would be good, mostly because the magic of the movie was, like, all those young kids. Like, they're 40 now. Yeah, I think for a sequel... Jack Black's character is a new principal. Okay. One of the kids, Miranda Ned Cosgrove. Ned still teaching at the school? Yeah, he's, oh, Ned Schneebly as Jack, there's two Ned Schneebly's. Which one? The real or the fake? Jack Black The real, isn't. the real. Mike White. Yeah, Ned Schneebly. Yeah, yeah, but Jack Black also went by Ned Schneebly. What's his real name in the movie? Dewey. Oh, yeah, Dewey Schmidt. Yeah. So Dewey Schmidt is the principal. Yep. One of the children is now a teacher in the class. Miranda Wait, Jackie, Cosgrove, I'm maybe. sorry. How would he be the principal? He the, when the movie ended, he started yeah, he's his like own. He's like arrested. No, he's not arrested. He started his own music school. For sure, it's been 20 years. And the music teacher becomes the principal. I feel like the real Ned Schneebly would be the 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 principal, and Dewey Schmidt would be like the head of the music department. Like, if we want to be realistic, for real. I love okay. that. I love the thought of Jack Black being the principal, but like we got to be logical. But sometimes they just make the principal like Mr. Congeniality, you know, like who does like the teacher that everybody loves, like eventually becomes the principal. That's how schools work. Right. I don't okay. think so, but continue. Okay, I got it. OK. Kenneth from Love is Blind is the principal. I was thinking that, too, of course. <laughs> no. OK. The, can I say my movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say your movie. Dewey is the principal. He got, went and got his master's. He loved teaching so much. He became a teacher okay. and a principal. He also does have a musical bend. One of the children, Miranda Cosgrove, since she is still a working actress and would be great, is the teacher for the class. Miranda Cosgrove went on to teach at the school? Yes. Miranda okay. Cos Couldn't you see that? Okay. 
Then we'll have new students, new musical students. And I guess we do need our, our new musical teacher. Okay. Now, here it is. Ready? Mm-hmm. Ned Schneebly, real one, is the principal. Jack Black is the head of the music department. Miranda Cosgrove and some of the other kids from I'm Not Cool Enough, you know, some of the other kids are parents at the school and their kids yeah. are yeah. the new class. S- class. And then Jack Black like, does have to pass the baton on who is the new substitute who comes in and starts a band, you know? Yeah, there needs Who's like the that. big comedy actor of the moment right now? Who's the young hot thing? Who's the next Jack Black? He's inimitable, but who is? Is it a woman? Nah, bro. <laughs> nah. Okay. And who like sings too? A lot of comedians like weirdly have good voice. Oh, you know who would be so great? Me. Okay, yeah. But also. Who? That girl. Kat. Cohen. You know Kat what? Kat Cohen. She would actually She'd be. be amazing. She would be better than me. The job of Dewey Schmidt goes to Kat Cohen. Maybe she's events, his Events, events, I want to go to... Oh my God, she's his daughter. Events, events, I want to go to events. Invite me to invite your me events. Invite me to your events. No, you're so the right. The movie writes itself. No, it doesn't. We did. And we'd like credit. Yeah, we would. Love it. And she's just kind of like... She gives like bad teacher energy. You know, she comes yeah. in hungover. Yeah. I love... Fusion. I love I think it can be done it has to be perfection otherwise throw it in the trash but if she said everyone, what she said. if the key players are on board and the magic and the genius behind the original movie is there for the second movie I think it can be done I love great well those were our fast four stories oh wow okay well we're not even done because it's Time. Weenie and weenie of the week. Which is brought to you by Quince. Imagine upgrading your wardrobe with luxury essentials at unbeatable prices. Quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach. Like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters for $50, organic cotton sweaters, washable silk tops, timeless 14 karat gold jewelry. The best part is that all of Quince's items are give, are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. So Quince partners directly with top factories. They're cutting the cost of the middleman out and they are passing the savings on to you. Quince only works Works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes, which we love. So it sounds like Quince is only using top quality fabric. You could say that. One again. could say. Now, if you watched our Patreon episode where I tried on all of Jackie's clothes, then you would know like I'm in the era of I'm not buying disposable crap clothing anymore. Like I'm investing in less stuff, but better quality. And Quince is a great place to get the basics. I have a Really great cashmere sweater from them. I have a great pair of black slacks, which I feel like are really good staple items. So I'm slowly buying, I think they're calling it a capsule wardrobe, where my pieces are better quality. I'm investing in them more, but I have less things, which I really like. Indulge in affordable luxury and go to quince.com slash toast for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash toast to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash toast. Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash toast for free shipping and 365 day returns. Thank you, Claudia. Okay, now it is time for our final segment of the week, Queenie and Weenie of the Week, where Jackie and I bestow the honor of Queenie of the Week and Weenie of the Week to two different individuals, someone who displayed Queenie-like behavior and somebody who displayed Weenie-like behavior. Now, as usual, I have three different options for Weenie of the Week and Queenie of the Week, I was really only able to scrounge up one. Okay, my Queenie of the Week is Drake Bell. (gasps) Okay. Coming forward, telling his story, really busting this case wide open and bringing a really important conversation back into the fore. Um, I think he exemplified Queenie-like behavior in that. I agree. I think he also continued to exemplify Queenie-like behavior when he made a video sort of defending his friend Josh when he didn't have to. You know, everyone's loving yeah. Drake and the internet has been kind of hard on Drake and he could have just like, you know, sat back and, and just accepted all this sort of love. Um, but he still, even in a time of healing, went out of his way to defend his friend. So I agree with you. Yeah. Who was yours? Oprah. 
Oh, that's a good one. Oprah, I feel like I've had so many conversations in the last, when, when her special came out on Ozempic five days ago, I've had like 10 different conversations with different people from different like sects of my life and they all watched it and I just find the way that people have been talking about Ozempic is different since her special. They all watched the special. It was the first time I've seen mainstream media do this overwhelmingly positive piece of reporting on Ozempic and that wouldn't have been possible without Oprah and that was Queenie, that was Queenie-like. Mm-hmm. So my Oprah, my Queenie is Oprah. My weenie. My weenie runner-up is Dan Schneider. I know. Of course. Honestly, I was going to choose somebody from the documentary, but it's so, weenie is like so, we're always like poking fun. It's not that serious. And I didn't yeah. I didn't think that giving someone like, you know, Brian Peck that, I thought it was not no, enough. No, no, beyond the pale. Weenie. Like, yeah, I agree. Um, he was my runner-up. Obviously, he exhibited weenie-like behavior this week and for the last weeks for thousands of weeks yeah. past um but my overall weenie of my personal week that really ruined my week was your migraine was my migraine week ruiner like I've just been so off my game this week I feel like I had so many days that I didn't get to I feel like I've been accomplishing so much and being so productive and it just like stopped me dead in my tracks and it wouldn't go away and it was giving weenie <sighs> I just want to say the overwhelming consensus from our community was that you were just like kind of your best self this week. Like people have really been um, sort of complimenting you. So the, fa the fact that you feel like you haven't been like your best self, just know that you have. It's been enough. Thank you. Well, I always give my best self to the toast, but it was the migraine that stopped me from like post toast right. hours. I would never let it affect the show, but I had to do less every day this week because of the migraine. And I just... I've been getting so much done, you know, even Redhead's content took a back seat and Ugh. it was just unfortunate and really unnecessary and, and rude and weenie-like. Well, Migraine, you are the weenie of the week. Now, for me. My weenie, not for me. My weenie of the week is a little bit different. My weenie of the week is Dalton Gomez. Because I just think any self-respecting man who even, you know, has a job accepting one million doll hairs from a woman, are you Okay. Now he's also a weenie because you only got a million. Ariana Grande is worth what two forty? Like both ends of this are weenie like. You didn't get enough, and the fact that you took oh vomiting weenie. I now, sir, announce you weenie of the week. I'm glad that you brought him up because something that I realized that I've just been wanting to mention, but there's never like a right time to mention. Just this thought that I had that I noticed is I've been listening to Ariana's album and Casey Musgraves' album, and there's a common theme. Okay. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but they both talk about the Saturn something. Like Ariana has like the Saturn thing. And, yep. um, but, and Casey's when I turned 27, my Saturn changed. Like I guess that went after 27 years, something happens with Saturn. And they both mention it on their albums. I'd never heard of it before. It's like a 27 year thing. It's and like, I guess that's why like being 27 is a major change. So it's a 27 year thing, but it's also like a rich person looking for like an answer to their problems thing. Like we all turn 27, we all turn 28 and we don't write songs about it. Like I don't, I don't get into that boo hickey, you know, Hollywood foreign nonsense. I don't. Me neither. But I know like Mercury is in retrograde. I Mercury, know, like, Mercury is. I know certain tr astrological tropes, but they're both talking about Saturn. And I thought it was interesting at the same time. I never heard of it before. What's that effect? Now Mandela. Well, no, that's not the Mandela. That's what you think the Mandela effect is. You yeah. always say that ain't the Mandela effect. There's an effect where like all of a sudden you start seeing this thing everywhere, but it this isn't even a coincidence because like these albums both came out and they're both talking about motherfucking Saturn. I don't blame it on, on any sort of effect. I blame it on like celebrities like being overly Ooh, hickey nonsense, overly into astrology and like therapy, honestly. OK, well, it was just no, it's an interesting. Whammy. Yeah, no, I need to. You know what? I need to add it to my list of coincidences. I don't know if you know, but I have one. I do. The Snow White movies. The Snow Exactly the Snow White movies. Okay, here it is. Yeah, there are so many. What was this? Saturn? Saturn, Ariana, Casey. This this list is years in the making because some of these things won't even make sense anymore. But like No Strings Attached and Friends with Benefits. That's a crazy the coincidence. Time. The two Fire Festival documentaries. Yeah. The same, like literally the same week. Um, then also at the same time that Harvey Weinstein was going down, there was a Hurricane Harvey. Okay. Um, at the same time that everything was happening with Stormy Daniels, Kylie named her daughter Stormy. Her daughter, yeah. <laughs> her daughter. Tree and Jimmy her daughters. Fallon. Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel. Okay, that one's like not that crazy, but yeah. 
Yeah, no, but it's a little crazy. They do the same thing. They, I mean, they literally do the same thing, yeah. Um, and then I also have Tennille. There's two Tennilles at the same time, and then we never heard of them again. They were like two country artists who popped off. They each had really popular songs, and both their names were Tennille. Tennille Arts and Tennille oh, Towins. Towns. Towns, yeah. Tones. Tones. Yeah. Okay. It's an important list. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> So I have fabulous dinner plans this evening. I'm going to like this new hot restaurant. Of course, Ben's offer like got the res. I have fabulous dinner plans too. But I'm a little nervous about going out to dinner. It's my first like out meal being on Weight Watchers. <sighs> Is the Weight Watchers, does the menu have like points on the side? No. They, it's you not. need to go to points friendly restaurants. Uh, Cheesecake Factory. You're literally the points guy. <gasps> oh my God, that's funny. I like that. That's funny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Tesla Line Morning Show. We deal with the fast five stars you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. By the way, I feel like people are going to be like, oh my God, they cut their episode so much today. There were so many edits. If you guys only knew Jackie's power went out in the middle of this episode. A lot of things happened that they, we actually didn't edit any of the content. Like, no, we, this isn't, sometimes we cut like to take something out. That's not what happened. These were all different technological issues. Thank you so much for listening to the toast with the technological issues. The Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the fast side stories you need to know every Monday through Friday and you do if you're watching so do to please feel copy of the video thumbs up also available podcast and podcast and found the spot find the public radio I read a cast of the podcast and found the spot find the a beautiful setting and wickedly talented we are. Have an amazing weekend. We love you. Love ya. Bye.